A wave of influential investors have started jumping on the gold bandwagon. What can institutional investors' buying patterns tell us about what is to come? Joining me today is Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors. Frank, welcome back to the show. It's great to be with you. Yes, well, thanks for joining us. I'm happy to get your thoughts on the Billionaires Club here. Uh, jumping on the gold bandwagon is uh, Paul Tudor Jones of Tudor Investment. Uh, he was the latest billionaire to join Gunlog Dalio on being bullish on gold. Um, he also said if gold can reach 1400, it could rally to 1700 rather quickly. So, were you, are you surprised to see all these billionaires showing love to the yellow metal here? No, no, I think it's, uh, and it's not, people get disappointed because it doesn't happen in two minutes, but I share with you that Sam Zell was uh, the, not the normal uh, gold stock uh, or gold bullion uh, uh, person behind this move. But I, I think what's, what's important to recognize is that there's, a, there's an imbalance between fiscal and monetary policies. So real interest rate issues uh, from Europe to Japan to here. And then we have the tariff war that's taking place. So those imbalances are going back to the 20s and 30s. And so how will they unfold is unknown. So always go to gold because it's the best financial security. It's the best form of insurance that is portable, that is liquid. It's the fourth most liquid asset class in the world. So I think that trend of the 10% golden rule uh, in your portfolio of rebalance, et cetera, that's becoming much more important in the eyes of global investors. Right, right. But do you think these billionaires are just speculating on gold because it's, it's trading or is this more long-term capital coming into the market? Uh, long-term capital coming into the market. Okay. Uh, I, I believe that they're trying to talk about a form of monetary insurance that they deem is necessary and prudent. It's not a 100% bet. It's not a leverage bet. But the thought process is I better have exposure to this asset right. class because of the imbalances globally between monetary and fiscal policies. Now, their exposure is coming in the form of, you know, either physical bullion or ETFs, not the mining sp- stocks is it just because it's just too speculative and you think they just want to stick to the safer physical play here well some of them are basically just focused on bullion because they're never actually commodities uh like tudor jones uh he doesn't he's not a stock player uh, he's much more focused on uh the commodity trends uh, but I, I think that when we take a look at uh, Ray Dalio, he, he has many gold stocks and royalty companies. Uh, there's a very healthy exposure to the royalty companies, and so does Citadel Capital. They show up uh, every time there's been a funding of, of, of Franco Nevada as a major player in that space. Frank, uh, going back to this rally that we were seeing behind gold, especially last week, lots of good momentum, uh, you know, in reaction to basically Trump's tariffs. Uh, But a lot has changed now. The U.S. has since reversed tariffs on Mexico. We have an upcoming Fed meeting here this week. Uh, Do you see the momentum changing at all here for gold? No, I I think it's just the volatility short term always expands going into uh, these these Fed meetings uh, and then they go quiet. Uh, And if any time, you know, the Bank of International Settlements, you know, it wouldn't be unusual for them to do some gold swap uh, if people become fearful of it because all those paper 60 central bankers are rolling over lots of paper, especially in Europe. And if gold starts taking off against the euro, then it just really exposes the imbalances of their policies and the negative real interest rates. So I think smarter and smarter people more broadly are uh, based are taking a position in gold as a strategic asset class and the high quality gold stocks. uh, Look at the tear on Newmont and Barrick. I mean, these stocks were incredible performers for the past 20 trading days. Why is that? When you look at their balance sheets and income statements, they're not as robust as many other mid caps, but they're big liquid names. And it's the generalists. It's the generalists that are buying those stocks as their exposure uh, to gold. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks Happy for- investing. Thanks, Frank. And thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.